Yo. How is everyone doing? Okay. This is going to be a tad bit weird. Mostly because I... This is a very, very weird concept to explain. And I'm just starting to understand that process. So, if you can, bear with me. Um, if it doesn't make sense, then just close the video and uh, I'll see you on the next tip. Because I don't blame you. This is one of those concepts that I'm still trying to slowly understand. But that's going, that's going back to, let's say, the basics in a sense. Um, anyhow, so what I mean by using this title of using all your seven senses is to properly understand and try to reflect uh, properly understand your drawing but then at the same time trying to reflect upon uh, reality in a sense uh, let me see if I can get something a bit more adequate for this again I haven't changed my uh, settings yet or I haven't redone my settings on uh, desktop mostly because I work on mobile let's see been a while since I drew with this tablet, so bear with me. This is probably something I'll do post recording as well, just to show even further. Uh, but this is where the importance of uh, not talking while you draw or not getting distracted while you draw comes in because you want to access that part of your brain that is able to uh, recognize certain feels or certain elements like right now uh, I'm drawing Elisa again <laughs> mostly because I'm trying to um, seal her concept even though I already have her concept as you saw on Instagram I just need to uh, lay it all down with emotions and such which is part of what I'm currently doing so here is a point where I try to think about uh, texture, elements, and volume, okay? And where the seven senses go, or where the seven senses can help, is that if you've ever, let's say, not saying touched eyelids, no, well, if you touch your own eyelid, that could kind of work as well. Uh, so you want to dive into your brain, in a sense, and pull that that experience of you touching an eyelid or your own eyelid and wondering okay well how how does it feel like right now i'm going to be touching mine okay just how does it feel like there's there's a bit of fuzz you know it feels a tad bit fuzzy because you're touching the top of the eyelid and then you're going to the top you want to watch out you don't want to poke your eye all right but with that feeling, okay? With that feeling, that little fuzzy feeling. And I kind of messed up with the nose. Let's see. I'll handle the nose a bit later because this goes into skin. Or uh, So with that feeling, I can at least try to mimic the fuzzy feeling I get when I touched my own eyelid. And then push it because um, of a woman's eyelid depending on the character or the person may be a bit more pushed forward uh, for character purposes as well you know, her eyes are usually closed well half closed or just, just poke that around see you know drawing and talking at the same time <laughs> but yeah I tried to pull what I've just experienced onto um, onto the paper or onto the character so fuzzy eyelid depending on the character's ethnicity uh, you might need to look up references just to see okay uh, in that particular cr uh, country are let's say models with fashionable eyelids are they different and then you might be able to find inspiring shape then as you sink it in and now I'm, I'm trying to feel my eyebrow. As you sink in, in on paper using the style, you're gonna you're using the feelings that you had. Your let's say we can call that study because it's part of uh, studying anatomy as well, but it's also part of your personal studies. So you're gonna pull in all that information. Let's say for the 
eyebrow. I feel my own eyebrow. I understand how it somewhat works or how it somewhat feels. Um, another part of the seven senses would be <laughs> smell, but I don't think eyebrows smell much or smell anything. That would go a bit more for, let's say, environment. But uh, let's see, we'll we'll jump in that a bit later. But again, using some of the feelings I have, along with how certain eyebrows look. So you're using your sense of touch, and you're using your sense of sight, and also noticing how color. You know how uh, light falls onto certain colors or certain elements so your the simplest way to pull this okay because it's not something mystical saying all your seven senses it's a way to remember that you're using your seven senses but uh, it's just pulling in from your life studies uh, to a certain degree to reinforce your concept and reinforce your drawing and this is where the whole back and forth between you know you're studying elements uh, sometimes you're doing construction like i did you're understanding the construction and the position of certain elements but then once you start drawing you just gotta go for broke and push all those um those studies in while uh, not being let's say a checklist but going at it with your feelings with how you felt, with how this is supposed to make you feel. And even right now, I'm going, okay, well, I've touched my own skin. <laughs> so how, how would it feel um, on a different person? And then uh, with this different person, her ethnicity is, let's say for Eliza, it's a mix of Japanese slash, uh, Japanese and African-American slash Brazilian. So how does it all affect that um, or how does it look usually uh, in real life and then how does it work <laughs> it, it's a tad bit odd to say okay but you I'm pretty sure some of you are getting this or understanding this it's basically you're pulling in from life references but you're using key words in the sense to help your brain remember what you studied uh, help your brain remember those feelings because you had these experiences you make those studies thus you can easily pull in and reinforce your concept and the same goes for the lips right now mm, touching my own lip because she's uh, Japan Japano Afri Africano Japanese uh, that could kind of work yes because she's Africano Japanese I can still get away with it with my Haitian lips kind of works right but I'm trying to just pull in my knowledge my my current knowledge and feelings of how lips feel and you know it's kind of squishy so I'm trying to get that feeling I'm trying to get that uh, that life into it you know and then after this sketch I'll basically just go back on top of it and fix um, everything that you know I do not deem as working uh, or everything that I deem like I want to change as for the eye oh boy the only reference I could have for eye or touching feeling an eye would be like biology class eons ago where you were dissecting a couple of things or or there are fake ones um, I forgot I really got I really forgot um, Let's see. What else? What else? What else? Uh, the same could go with the hair. Let me just try to reinforce or complete this. But you know, all of these thoughts, all right? All of these thoughts, you're basically thinking about it in a flash as you're as you're drawing. Okay. Uh, let's say the hair. The hair I've seen. I haven't touched hair like that, but I've seen hair like that. So. Because of the texture that the hair has, can I refer that texture to something else that I've touched? And I guess that could be cosplay wigs uh, or a different kind of feeling to it. Uh, let's see, so this is what I'm trying to pull, but ultimately I would need to either uh, spot cosplay hair exactly like that or with that kind of texture. Or <laughs> gonna have to 
um, find an equivalent of that hair within another type of texture. And, you know, because who the fuck goes around to touch people's hair? Uh, admittingly, I could go to a convention and say, all right, could I, can I touch your hair? It's mostly for uh, drawing purposes. Don't worry, it's not creepy. Uh, but that's how you learn. It's really, it's nuts. But if you are able to basically gather your seven senses as you draw, uh, pulling in from studies that you've made before, you will be able to achieve an, an interesting level of result. Uh, it's not ultimate, of course, because frankly, you're going to need your, uh, your basics, your fundamentals and such. But when you pull it all together, this is where magic happens. Uh, right now, I'm really not satisfied with her concept, but that's because I have a far better one in my sketchbook, which I need to use as a seal down, you know, just to settle down the concept. Uh, yet, the same could go when you are drawing uh, an environment. Let's say, let's say I do not even have a map for this. Uh, let's say I'm gonna take A specific environment from uh, the next extra stage comic. So, just set some really quick perspective lines or guidelines to set up a, a zone. I wouldn't recommend doing it like that. I'd recommend you doing a grid first, which is something I'm gonna need to do for these. Ah, so many notes, man. So many notes. But. Uh, and what I mean by a grid, I mean, let's say this square is this, seen from on top, okay? So at this point, I would just separate it the same way, and then properly say, this is a building. Um, next to that building, what is there? Is there another building? Maybe. Is it behind? Okay, yeah, it's going to be a bit shorter well not shorter but a bit smaller of a building then let's say we cut it off with a fence uh there's gonna be a trash right there because that's where this building is a tenant put the trash what kind of building is this a eh, quickie mark uh so store of course i do it a bit bigger uh is there another building there you know what that's the street corner so the street corner street like you're just setting up your zone, setting up what the area looks like, and then you're gonna be able to just quickly, seeing that you have your plan right here set up, man. You're setting up your combos. Um, seeing that you have your plan right here, you can somewhat just start laying down stuff, okay? So you get into that mode where, let's say this building was, is it a house? There's a house next to a quickie mark. Or a depth store, yeah. That could work. Uh, what kind of house? Oof. Oh, I know the depreneur is a bit on longer. The depreneur. It's a drugstore for you, American people, and everyone else, I guess. My bad. So let's say drugstore is a bit like this. I do not have a design for a drugstore. I really need to get on that. Um, I also really need to get onto stylizing backgrounds or getting into that the vein. I would love that. So this is roof. <laughs> this is roof. Uh, let's see. The depth is not as long as I would want to, but you know. Uh, wait, two windows. What kind of depth store is this? Why are there windows? Oh wait, no. Usually there are. I was gonna say, uh, let's see. Hmm. I'm trying to, trying to figure it all out, but at the same time, okay, as I'm thinking about this, I basically am trying to get into this environment. I'm trying to sink into this environment, and we spoke about that a bit earlier. Let's see. So now, I know we spoke about that earlier, and this is where it all kind of comes in, where, okay, 
street like I'm right now you saw me going very analytical which it's a good start it's a good setup but the part where I'm gonna need to sweep in with uh, the knowledge or the seven senses is just trying to understand how to deal within this environment so uh, the setting is supposed to be this kind of Chinatown and of course I'm gonna add Japanese type of stuff to it because you know I mix many of those no that's not Japanese Japanese would be another form anyway um, <laughs> this is why you do studies people or more more and more studies so at this point I will kind of try to understand what kind of mood do I want out of this environment okay and this is where I kind of need to start thinking and feeling about previous experiences so uh, one of these let's say mood could be it's a rainy uh, let's say it's a rainy stage okay so when I was outside in the rain going through certain environments how did it all feel it felt damped how did light fall on cement that had uh, rain on top of it well a, there would be certain flashes not flashes certain um, let's say light spots because of light reflecting on water or uh, I do not know the proper term for it not yet but you know you would get that aspect of it uh, you would also get very damped buildings um, so let's say um, I have to draw on a micro scale there because you know when, or meaning I have to draw closer but let's say these are tiles okay and again this goes into studying the elements within with the drawing so let's say this type of building has tile on its sides thus the water would fall from top go down the tile go down on the lower tile and then just start going down like that so you would have at least you know those little those annoying little parts when you're walking down the street and there's water falling on you straight away or you're seeing this down zone um, or you're seeing this downpour area and you're you fucking dodge to make sure that you go, you don't get that drop on you that exactly that that's where you can pull that in and how to hmm, like how to properly refer to that um, you're basically making sure that you don't <laughs> don't get hit by water uh, you're basically making sure to pull from your life experience to go into your drawing and of course this goes uh, for both the thumbnail stage but you won't go that deep you know this is still basically a thumbnail uh, yet you still want to try to pull that information during your thumbnails so that when you're going to do your final piece you're basically just gonna explode uh, with all those feelings that you've gathered from your studies from your life interactions yeah, it's a chain it's a real chain but it's a lot of fun and you could even go deeper and say okay well this scene is it a nighttime scene is it how did I feel at night how was the environment uh, that I've experienced at night compared to this and you are just gonna go just gonna experiment just gonna try you know pull in all that that resource so kind of hoping that I didn't do it too crudely um, seeing that I have a new recording well a new holder for my camera I'll be able to show you how I do it traditionally because digitally wise I am not that versatile yet but I hope this gives you or this gives you a bit of uh, a bit of a hands-on when it comes to that concept uh, it, it helps your studies in a sense hell even this since I can feel the, the ridge of the, my nose and how it feels I know there's a little corner here corner because of the skull like 
you know you're trying to pull in both your your academic studies but also your real life your real life experience and this is why studying from life is very 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 important um it's not seeing it as reference more so as seeing it from a um, pool of experience that you can pick from when interpreting what you want to interpret when um, you're trying to give a message in a sense you can just easily pull that knowledge from and that's why they always used to say man knowledge is power and no joke it is for drawing and just for life in general knowledge is fucking power or else well you know we would have still been stuck with the inquisitions and such things pushing it too far with the analogies but you understand what i mean right your knowledge of life can definitely help you draw <laughs> thus knowledge is power and that's why you guys have to keep studying and same here like my my journey through this is not even over it's not e it hasn't even begun because i've started really late to understand that concept and you guys know you guys know my history right yeah i had to think a certain way i had to act a certain way but now it's just opening up and life is basically the the determining factor or one of the determining factor when it comes to my type of work animation is about life as well well animation is about life Lar art is at the same time about life or giving a message well giving a message okay you know what art has multiple you know multiple 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 um, reasons it has multiple reasons uh and i don't want to generalize but animation art is uh, a lot of it has to do with life and being able to convey feelings convey emotions through characters and to do so, well, you're going to have to understand life, how it works. And you can remain at a sub-level where uh, you're, you know, you're going with facial expression and you're able to express emotions via facial expressions and body movement. Or you can go into a deeper level where you actually understand um, the volumes, how the muscles work and how the muscles react so that you can have a more accurate representation of life since you know what muscles do and how it all works then you can stylize it don't worry it it all just fits in afterwards once you style uh once you have the the main life aspect stylizing it is not a big deal because you've already established a form of reality um so that's about it guys uh don't forget your seven senses when you draw hell even when i'm drawing this character's hair hair uh, is a bit fuzzy a bit because of the character's uh let's say origin it's a bit musty it's may have <laughs> may have lights um and you know all this helps just draw the hair so remember life just life And of course, having these healthy back and forth between studies and then expressing yourself and then study and expressing yourself, right? No need to be really harsh on yourself. I will show you what being harsh on yourself is soon, but uh, that's going to be for another episode. All right, guys. Thanks again for participating and your patience. Um, I hope this helps. I'm just learning a few more things on my own as well. So, hey, remember, there is no real you know concrete rules everything kind of mixes and match and you find whatever technique that you like or depending on your goal you know it, it all depends on your goal i'm out guys have a good night day morning everything <laughs>